Let me ask you what's the most iconic thing about Windows. Oh, wait, let me get my charger first. Okay, so what's the second most iconic thing about Windows? Apps not responding. Hell, at times even task manager is not responding. It's funny, like, I mean, how would you kill apps now? Over the time using my laptop, there was a dip in performance. And thankfully, there are things which you can do to increase the overall performance. And no, I'm not talking about disk fragmentation or using your pen drive as a RAM or uninstalling apps. Rather, some strong software changes and hardware upgrades that actually boost your performance in Windows. Speaking of Windows, this is Prateek from TechWiser.com and here are some neat tips and tricks that actually boost your Windows performance. First things first, what really slows up the start menu is Cortana. I mean, have a look. If I search for this file, it returns a couple of web results. I mean, just give me the file. And to make it even worse, Microsoft doesn't let you disable Cortana after the recent update of Windows 10. But here is the workaround. Head over to the registry key editor. But before all of these, I would recommend you to take a backup first. Navigate to the location displayed on the screen right now. Make sure it is the correct location. If you don't find the Windows search folder, make one. Create a D word entry and name the entry as allow Cortana and value as zero. Save it and that's it. Okay, Google, bye bye. Ah, uh, sorry, Cortana. Now, here is a side by side comparison of how the search results show up with and without Cortana. In case you are too lazy to do all of these, Below is the link to a zip folder which has two registry entries, allow Cortana and disable Cortana. Just double click on disable Cortana and it should do the job. Now that you have disabled Cortana, let's boost your file search. You might already be familiar with everything. It searches file on your local machine and man, it is so slick. I mean, check this out. I usually forget file names this is how Windows search handles it. And this is how everything does. I can drag and drop the file within seconds. As you can see, the native Windows indexing isn't any faster. So why not just turn it off and save some resources? Here. Remove all the entries from the indexing list. You can leave program files if you want. Once done, you can even go ahead and stop the indexing service from services.msc. The reason being, Windows continuously indexes files, emails and other contents in the background. This significantly slows down the startup and even normal processes. Doing this will give a boost to your startup time as well as normal processes. Now talking about startup time, most people actually recommend you to disable all the startup apps. Well, that's just being naive. No, don't do that. I would recommend you to check the startup impact. Head over to the startup tab in task manager. You will see each program's startup impact. If you see some programs impact as not measured, reboot the system once. Now the ones which have a high impact needs to be disabled. Do that, you would see a significant improvement in the startup time. You might already know about overclocking. Here is another thing called undervolting. Normally, your CPU and GPU are extra voltage, which they don't actually need. Now, extra voltage gets energy and energy thermal throttling. In simple words, when your CPU gets heated up to the maximum temperature, it sheds load to get back to normal temperature. So, if your PC does get heated up a lot while doing normal stuff or editing like mine, you can try undervolting. And please do this only if you understand PC hardware enough. To undervolt, you can use the Intel's XTU app for Intel processors or there is a third party app called Throttle Stop for generally all the processors. Now what you can do is decrease the amount of voltage being supplied to your CPU. Like mine is Intel i5-7200U. 
so I have undervolted it to minus 0.1 volt. You can Google your CPU's undervolt limit or just try decreasing it stop by stop and see where your PC freezes. The previous voltage point should be the sweet spot. You can stress test within the app and see the before and after difference. I've got almost a 10 degree temperature difference after undervolting. And this not only stops until thermal throttling, but also increases the life of your processor. But don't overdo this and I wouldn't recommend doing this for your GPU. So this is the maximum performance boost you can achieve on software. But there is no alternative for good hardware. But unlike everyone else around, I don't want to spend a fortune on upgrades. So my budget was limited to 5000 INR or $75. People don't realize how significant of a difference a RAM can make. It lets you use your CPU to the maximum extent. Now I went on Amazon and got myself a crucial 8GB RAM with a 2400 MHz clock rate. I wouldn't recommend a RAM with higher clock speed, doesn't really make sense. Now I have replaced a 4GB memory stick with an 8GB one. So in all, I have like 12GB of RAM now. Now it's benchmark time. As you can see, RAM does make a huge difference. I hope Chrome is happy now. And now RAM didn't make a significant difference, but I still have a few bucks left with me. So what's good than spending it on an SSD? Luckily, I have an extra SSD slot on my laptop, but if you don't, you can always swap it with your hard drive. SSDs have gotten so cheap now and remember, internal SSDs are far cheaper than external ones. Now, you can get a 2.5-7mm or M.2 internal SSD depending on your PC slots. You can easily google the specs of your laptop online. After I have installed this on my laptop, I just switched my programs and windows boot file to the SSD. Now I can show you benchmarks as well, but let's go a step ahead. You don't buy an SSD for better boot time and benchmarks. I edit videos on Premiere Pro. So if I compare side by side, this is the difference between the render time. And if you game on your PC, just move the Steam games to the SSD and it feels almost a different laptop. Usually your CPU is capable of handling lots of processes, but it lags when you don't have enough RAM or due to slow read and write speed. So if you can spend 5000 on the hardware, it's gonna make a huge difference. So these are some of the ways to actually boost your Windows performance. But if you're still unsatisfied, take out your Android phone Open Google Maps, search the nearest Apple store, get an Apple credit card and buy a Mac. <laughs> Just kidding, Windows are better, don't tell Mrinal though. And this is Prateek signing off, see you the next time.